This is what the inside of a lithium-ion battery looks like, just thin sheets of foil and black paste. Yet this humble design powers your phone, your laptop, your car, even spacecraft far above Earth. If you've ever wondered why we still rely on something so fragile, or why safer? Better batteries haven't replaced it. You're not alone. Today, we'll uncover the untold journey of the lithium-ion battery, from fire risks and hidden dangers to breakthroughs that shaped the modern world. Stay with me, because the story of how this power source was born is stranger than you think. The Illusion of Simplicity At first glance, a lithium-ion battery seems ordinary. No glowing core, no visible complexity, just layers rolled tightly together. Yet within that plain design lies enough energy to move vehicles, power industries, and sustain our digital lives. Its simplicity hides decades of science. Each layer plays a role. One gives up electrons, another receives them, and between them, an electrolyte carries ions. The harmony is delicate. If the balance holds, the current flows smoothly. If it breaks, failure follows. What makes this technology remarkable is not its look, but its precision. Countless experiments, careful adjustments, and daring risks shaped a design that feels unremarkable until it fails. We carry this invisible chemistry daily, trusting it without thought. Before this quiet revolution arrived, however, energy storage looked very different. Batteries were heavy, unreliable, and far too weak to support the future waiting to be built. Before lithium, in the early 1980s, rechargeable batteries delivered little power for their weight. To keep a single light bulb glowing for an hour, you needed nearly a kilogram of battery mass. That limitation touched everything. The first mobile phones were bulky bricks, requiring hours of charging for minutes of use. Laptops barely lasted a meeting, cameras drained quickly, and even hospital equipment faced limits. Technology could not move faster until storage improved. Companies across industries searched for answers. Electronics makers wanted portable devices. Car companies dreamed of electric vehicles. Even oil corporations felt pressure to explore alternatives. Everyone knew the stakes. Doubling energy density could change the landscape of technology. What none of them realized was that a young chemist had already uncovered the key ingredients. His discovery began not with consumer gadgets, but in the shadow of an oil shortage that forced even the most powerful companies to imagine a world without fuel, the first spark. Stanley Whittingham, a British scientist at Exxon, was one of the first to see a path forward. In 1972, he studied compounds that could store and release energy by holding ions within their structure. Then came the oil crisis. Prices spiked, and drivers across America waited in endless lines for fuel. Exxon, shaken by the prospect of scarcity, suddenly backed Whittingham's work. His research led him to titanium disulfide, a layered material that could host lithium ions. It was light, compact, and promising. For the first time, a rechargeable cell could deliver far more energy than earlier designs. What began as a quiet curiosity now carried urgency. Whittingham's invention looked ready to change the future. But the same qualities that made lithium powerful also made it volatile. The promise of high energy density was real, yet beneath it weighted risks that would soon reveal themselves in dramatic and dangerous ways. Fires and failures. Whittingham's cell worked, but its weakness was hidden in the anode. He used metallic lithium and over repeated charges, the metal grew into spindly shapes called dendrites. These sharp branches pierced the separator and shorted the battery from within. The results were violent. Cells overheated, burst into flames, and sometimes exploded. 
Exxon's lab became so accident-prone that firefighters were called repeatedly. The vision of safe, reliable energy storage dimmed. When oil markets stabilized, enthusiasm for alternatives collapsed. Exxon cut funding, and Whittingham's pioneering work was shelved. The first lithium battery revolution ended before it could begin. But the idea did not die. Others read his research and saw untapped potential. The problem was not the concept, it was the materials. Somewhere, a safer design was waiting. All it needed was someone to reimagine the chemistry and take the risk that Exxon would not. A second chance. At Oxford University, physicist John B. Goodenough studied Whittingham's findings with new eyes. He believed the cathode material was holding the cell back. Titanium disulfide offered only modest voltage. Something more powerful had to exist. Good enough turned to transition metal oxides, materials with a strong appetite for electrons. Lithium cobalt oxide stood out. When tested, it delivered nearly 4 volts per cell, almost double Whittingham's results. The breakthrough was striking, not only for its voltage, but also for safety. Lithium cobalt oxide already contained lithium within its structure, reducing the need for unstable metallic lithium at the anode. It was a design that could change everything. Yet bureaucracy stalled momentum. Institutions filed patents but failed to act. Companies showed little interest. The discovery waited in silence. Good enough had given the world a safer, stronger cathode. But it would take another mind, halfway across the world, to finally connect the missing pieces and bring the concept to life. The missing piece. In Japan, Akira Yoshino sought a stable anode. He experimented with plastics that could conduct electricity, but they stored too little energy. Frustration grew as each attempt failed. Then, in 1982, Yoshino discovered Goodenough's work on lithium cobalt oxide. Suddenly, the puzzle made sense. With a strong cathode already available, his task became finding a reliable partner for it. Carbon offered the answer. After testing different forms, he found graphite could absorb lithium ions and release them again without breaking apart. Unlike metallic lithium, it remained safe across repeated cycles. Yoshino's new design combined graphite with lithium cobalt oxide. The result was stable, rechargeable, and powerful. For the first time, a lithium-ion battery existed that could be scaled beyond the laboratory. The discovery marked a turning point. What had once been unstable experiments now looked like a technology ready for real devices. Industry was watching, and soon the world would follow. The world awakens. Sony recognized Yoshino's design as a breakthrough. In 1991, the company launched the first commercial lithium-ion battery, placing it inside a handheld video camera. The effect was immediate. Consumers noticed lighter devices with longer life. Soon, laptops, phones, and music players adopted the new cells. Companies even highlighted lithium-ion in their advertisements, a mark of progress and sophistication. For users, the change felt liberating. Hours of work or entertainment became possible without constant charging. Travel grew easier, and technology finally matched the pace of human imagination. The success reshaped daily life. Small cells enabled portable electronics. Larger packs opened the door for electric vehicles. Lithium-ion has become the silent engine of the digital age. Yet the very chemistry that made this possible carried unseen dangers. Beneath the progress was a reminder. The line between stability and failure was thin, and the risks of this compact energy source had not disappeared. Fragility exposed. As lithium ion spread worldwide, failures began to draw attention. Phones overheated. Laptops smoked. On airplanes, fires erupted from small cells stored in bags. The danger came from aging and damage. Over time, 
delicate layers shifted. Lithium built up unevenly, weakening the separator that kept the charge in balance. When it failed, heat surged, and reactions spiraled out of control. Oxygen released from the cathode fed the flames. The fire needed no outside air. It carried its own fuel within. To cope, airlines adopted fireproof pouches for overheating devices. Emergency crews developed methods to submerge packs in water tanks. Each precaution revealed the same truth. Even tiny batteries carried power that demanded respect. The technology had delivered freedom and progress, but it also introduced a hazard impossible to erase. We carried that contradiction with us every day, proof that modern life depended on fragile chemistry contained within thin, silent walls. The price of power. Every lithium-ion battery also carries a hidden human and environmental cost. Extracting lithium consumes vast amounts of water, often in regions where water is scarce. Landscapes are altered and communities are affected. Cobalt, another vital ingredient, comes largely from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mining there is dangerous, with reports of exploitation and child labor. Behind the clean image of renewable technology lies a harsher reality of supply chains marked by struggle and inequity. Meanwhile, demand continues to rise. Electric vehicles, renewable storage, and billions of consumer devices all compete for the same limited resources. By the end of this decade, millions of tons of materials will be required to sustain production. The lithium-ion battery brought progress but it also tied us to ethical and environmental dilemmas. Its legacy is complex, both a symbol of innovation and a reminder that even the cleanest technologies cast long shadows on the world that produces them. The lithium-ion battery changed how we live. It gave us portable power, clean vehicles, and a global connection. Yet its story is also one of danger, sacrifice, and hidden costs. Fires reveal their fragility. Mining exposes its human toll. Still, the search continues for safer chemistry, for better storage, for answers beyond lithium itself. The future may lie in sodium, solid state, or technologies yet unimagined. Until then, we remain bound to this imperfect miracle. A small roll of foil and powder holding the weight of our modern lives waiting quietly for the next chapter of energy to unfold.